secret friends unite! Welcome to the Secret Friends Unite podcast, episode 74. This is uh, two or three geeks talking about all that's cool in the world of nerdery. And uh, I'm your host, Todd Oxtra, joined by my hetero life mate, Charlie Carden. What's up, y'all? Yeah, so uh, big change to the show, not for the content, but for the frequency. Uh, we're going to be going bi-weekly. So going from here, every two weeks you will get a show. So, uh, Assuming that technology keeps up, because that's what killed our last uh, every other episode. Last week's episode, and then not not the one with Bobby, but the one before that got lost. Yeah, it tends Due to, to be. Technology, yeah, know. it tends to be when the internet is less than stellar when you're using a Skype or Google Hangouts. It tends to throw a wrench in the works. So, and it frustrates you because you're like, well, is it going to recover? You know, are you just going to repeat yourself and go through everything again? So, uh, yeah. So we didn't. We we tried to record last week, did not work out. So we are back this week and going forward. We will uh, be looking at some really fun shows. We're going to be after this show. We're going to be doing our summer movie preview which will be a lot of fun so charlie let's get this one kicked off with the rumors and news with madam webb now it's time for madam webb's rumors and news take it away boys thank you madam webb uh now that it's uh getting warm you can clean out all of your uh dead cat bodies um <laughs> all of your boxes of adult diapers uh since you are fluffy uh, yes Fl Fl fluffy's not getting up <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, sorry, hopefully you're getting help with your hoarding activity. Oh, boy. What do we got? It's trailer time. So mm -hmm. we, we didn't get to talk about Ro uh, Rogue One last week, but uh, that was the big trailer that dropped. Um, you know, this is the first we're seeing of a side story in the Star uh, Wars universe. It's a prequel to Episode Four. Uh, and it's basically not going to involve any of the characters, the main characters that we know of. So hopefully this will be all new main characters. And then when we, when we say main characters, if you can believe the rumors, I think we're talking more about the hero characters. So there's a rumored appearance of Grand Moff Tarkin, who was one of the big villains. He's in, not a main character. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> all right. Well, but, the, but the, along that same line, they talk about Darth Vader possibly making an appearance. Yes. Now that is a main character. The right, Emperor but, would be a main it, character. But as far as, yeah. I mean, I think the safest way to put it would be there are no Skywalkers or the Force being a major entity in this film, um, which to me I found compelling. I mean, Todd, everybody knows where you stand when it comes to prequels. <laughs> but, uh, you know, kind of comparing the, the prequels, which are al almost a dirty word to a lot of us Star Wars fans, um, to this uh, standalone concept. I mean, all the standalone films uh, that they've been talking about are essentially prequels. You know, what What do you think? When you put together the three, this one, then we've heard about Boba Fett, and then we've heard about uh, Han Solo, all being solo films. What do you think? Solo. 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 So. So, um, so Hans Olo. Of the other uh, side story prequels, this one was the one I was least excited about because it is kind of a constrained plot. Uh, it's specifically tied to something we know very well and lovingly. Yes, there's going to be, and apparently this is going to be more like a heist film, you know, get the team together, got to go and break in, you know, kind of like Ocean's Eleven, things like that. So that could be a lot of fun. It's definitely a different take on the Star Wars mythos, obviously with Rebels and Clone Wars. There's been things they've done in that that have been kind of different and, and fun. Um, but I think this is the one that's most constrained by the plot that we know of, um, unless there is a Rogue 2 group because Rogue 1 screwed up. Uh, <laughs> Plan B, the, uh, the, well, the what, what was that movie where it was, oh, Spice Like Us. That's right. Where they go in and they're basically the decoys because they're, you know, not real spies. Exactly. Just kind of a couple of idiots. The red herring threw them out there. Uh, but yeah, right. I mean, it's, we know at least their plan succeeds. Whether the team makes it or not, we don't know. And that's going to be a thing. Well, will these, will these characters, any one of them make it through and then was it much ado about nothing? That was the end of the story for these characters, or will they show up withered and old 
like mm-hmm. in episode eight, will it be like there'll be an alien character? Apparently, it's going to be a CG one. Would they show up? Then it's much easier to right. not worry about the aging and things like that, which would be kind of cool take. I believe Alan uh, Tudyk's character is supposed to be a droid, and I think that's in, the in character. They, yeah, and, and you know, we we saw the trailer, and uh, they introduced a new planet. Looks very tropical, which we haven't had before. Right. Um. You know, the Jamaica of the Star Wars universe, maybe. <laughs> Come to Jamaica and feel the force. What was this, what was the uh, one character from uh, Futurama? The oh, was it the the oh, Hermes? Hermes. He was Jamaican. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's <laughs> his home planet. You know. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah so there, there's your there's your cinematic universe, Futurama and Star Wars. Yeah, sure. Why not? It's fun. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Um, but I mean, the other ones. I know a lot of people are like. I don't want. I don't care about Hansel. But I'm like. We know they had lives and did things and interesting adventures more so right. than Leia or Luke. Uh, right, so which very... they did nothing. Leia, Leia sat in a lot of Senate meetings. Awesome. <laughs> and Luke was uh, bullseyeing womp rats in his T-16. Yeah. That's, that's one scene. It doesn't make a movie. And we do know what Obi-Wan was up to. Because he was nothing. in the Clone Wars. I mean, he was. <laughs> yeah, right. And we've seen him on the screen, whether it was a movie or a, a cartoon, a lot. Mm-hmm. He's the he's the right. character that's been on the screen the most of any. So, right. uh, what what else do you want to see with Obi? I know everybody wants that, but I'm like, what are you going to show? But his adventures with Qui Gon? Mm, mm. I don't know. Yeah, maybe? They, they they wrote books about it and books which are no longer canon. So who exactly. cares? So I mean, Han Solo, at least you know he was a rogue. He did adventures. He did he did crazy things. He was you know pro- apparently he was married before. We know about that in the comic thing. And uh, mm-hmm. same thing with uh, Boba Fett. He's a bounty hunter, so he probably went off and did some crazy adventures. I don't know. It seems like there's more material there than than this because this is a one shot. But I mean, it could be fun. I'm I'm not trying to be negative. Um, I am more excited about new adventures going forward, looking in the Star Wars mm-hmm. universe because I think those have always been the most successful and they're the most fun because they bring in new elements versus a lot of uh, fan service and oh look, it's Mon Mothma. Right. Really, we're getting excited about Mon Mothma, a person that was right. in one screen scene for like and minutes. and. And a cut scene from episode three. It's and it's the same actress from that cut scene. Exactly. Which, which that's an awfully deep cut. Yeah. Because who cares? And I don't want a lot of like fan service in this movie. I want new characters, new bad guys. Because right. I I think the Empire had more than one military officer, right? <laughs> right. I mean, and we are going to see a new format of uh, stormtrooper, which maybe because you know. The desert troopers, which why would you wear dark dark armor when you're in the tropics? Wouldn't it be too hot? I you know maybe they're cool. To, maybe it's a big AC system in there. Maybe, maybe that's the that's the fancy tech we don't know anything yeah, about. Yeah, but as we know, always been on black. So oh, always so except yeah. you'll find when you that's go to the movies. Tr- that's true. <laughs> <laughs> this this past weekend. Yes. yes so yes. but but uh, more to come on that. Next up is. Uh, Doctor Strange, Todd, this is your baby, and and I I know you love to keep talking, so I'm going to give you what you love. So you go ahead, because I, I I've got some counterpoint thoughts to this one. Well, that's good. I mean, I, I this is um, probably the Marvel movie I, I I'm most looking forward to uh, because this movie after I, I thought this they would do something different because they already announced that the director he's a, he's a horror director. So he definitely comes from a different place than most of the other directors. James Gunn, I probably would say, he's the one that has the weirdest background because he did do horror films. He started off in the trauma verse and then he directed Scooby Doo. So <laughs> very odd, you know, but he's got a different tone and he, he does his own thing. So this oh. director was a horror director. Uh, I think he did Insidious, maybe, or one of those. I've seen those. Yeah, yeah. those are those, those were all right films. Yeah, so I think he's going to do something different. And Doctor Strange is really the first mystical character in the Marvel Universe. We obviously had Ghost Rider back in the day, but... Uh. <laughs> Apparently there was a movie. I don't know. We don't talk about that. There, there, there were two. Exactly. So this is going to be cool, and and we we see the trailer is really well done. Uh, we get a little glimpse about uh, Stephen Strange. It's weird to hear Benedict Cumberbatch with an English or a, an American accent. I I don't even recall hearing him speak that much. He, he didn't speak. He didn't say much. It seemed like there was a lot of emoting. Yeah, there it was. It was a it was a moat heavy. Well, it was off screen. You just heard dialogue over uh, some scenes, and um, he definitely does not have his normal 
uh, you know, booming voice that, 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 that his moneymaker really is his voice. I think more so than anything. Right. It's just, it's what he brings forward. I mean, he, he was a dragon. It was the voice of a dragon in, in Smog. Mm-hmm. Smog. Smog. And he, I mean, they kind of get into it. Basically he was a surgeon, he's injured and his hands are basically useless. He can't use them the way he did. And he goes on a journey uh, and he goes into, I want to call it like uh, Shangri-La or someplace like that. Some, some Kowloon, is it Kowloon? The, the, the Mystic Wand of Watum? Yes. Know, it, it's something like that. It's a yeah. fake uh, Asian, like Himalayas type, where he seeks enlightenment and he finds um, our favorite endogenous star, um, Tilda, Tilda Swinton, Swinton <laughs> who is bald and kind of does look like an Asian man. <laughs> oh, She's playing the ancient one, which is kind of like mm-hmm. uh, the mentor of Doctor Strange. Um, and you see, he, he basically, it's kind of cool. The, the one thing they did show that was really cool that was an action sequence was his astral form. So she basically hits him, and you see this 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 smoke like thing come out of him, and you realize it's Doctor Strange in his astral form, and that's one of his the key components of him. He was able to leave his body and travel and go through different dimensions and things. And I thought the trio looked awesome. It's definitely not a superhero film. He just happens to have he's the master of mysticism, and he got lumped in with other heroes, so he he does a different thing. So it's not going to be capes and cowls, although he has a cape. So let me take that back. It's not going to be cowls. <laughs> no cowls. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I I really am excited uh, to see where they go with this. They did show some other actors in this that are going to be in it. Uh, Rachel McAdams? Yes. Is the nurse and not and sure if she's going to have another you, role. You have the gentleman with the unpronounceable name. Shettle will edit you four. Four? Yeah. Yes. He is Modred, the mystic, who is the villain. Uh, well, you know, yeah. I mean, traditionally he is a, a villain, but maybe right. they're Is he going to be a fr- friend turn villain? One of those? I think they could go that route. One maybe of those they, common tropes. They were friends, and then they had a falling out, and then, then they're nemeses. Um, but maybe they were students under the Ancient One, and they separated. Or maybe, as Doctor Strange uh, sought out other people with mystic powers, he found him. But we Could also be. we also know there's another villain apparently too. Oh, which, I was going to say which what you described was that, that was uh, Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow in GI Joe in the, in Larry Hamas comics, which are revered classics. And, I believe and I believe that's what everything that has had that has been based on is GI Joe. Oh, it's, to me, <laughs> since 1982, absolutely. That's right. That's right. So I'm excited, Charlie. What do you think? You know. <sighs> I, I see where you're coming from when you say different is great. Um, but as far as an excitement factor, you know that the fantasy stuff is just not for me. It, it looks, I mean, he's a great actor. They've got a lot of great actors around him. It's a big departure. Will people follow? Is my question. I mean, are there enough people out there? You and I, you and I, and John and I, I have had this discussion a lot lately, um, particularly around the the failures of Batman versus Superman, uh, Marvel versus DC, and kind of looking at that big picture. Will the sheep just follow <laughs> from film to film to film, or if something is, is such a, a sharp veer off to the left in a different style film, will people go along for the journey because they're invested in a great different story? So it, to me, I don't think it's going to be a misstep creatively. I, I just wonder how good it's going to do. Because, I mean, Marvel's taken gambles and won. Guardians of the Galaxy was a big win. Ant-Man did pretty damn well. And and, and it, it's about a guy who controls ants. An original Avenger, granted. But, you know, it was a that was a different kind of movie. And it was still successful. So you're always just waiting for them to finally, along their path, to step in a pile of dog poo. You know what I mean? And to have it sully. So I don't know. I know that the mystical stuff is your bag. I respect uh, Doctor Strange. He's one of he's in, one of the very first Marvel characters. Strange Tales, I believe it was, probably in the mid '60s. So right along the launch uh, of the Marvel Universe, uh, a Stanley creation, which you know all, most all of the great Marvel characters and are. Steve so, Ditko too, right? He did the artwork. Was, was it a? I think it was a Ditko, not yeah. a Kirby. Yeah. Yeah, Ditko, Ditko uh, was really only responsible for Strange and, and for Spider-Man, and yeah, really the rest of it correct. was Jack Kirby. Correct. Um, but yeah, I uh, you know I, I I don't feel the fire for this one that you did. Yeah, and it's you know, not my bag. but 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 I I respect that it could end up being something awesome, but a big enough departure. Who knows if if the, if the sheeple are going to follow along? 
The, the 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 wide movie going public the people outside of people like you and me yeah i mean they got captain america to work which was a uh historical type of you know film right. so, so they got that to work which a lot i think a lot of people weren't worried and and i will say with captain america it, it wasn't a joke it wasn't a, a, a jokes a minute movie which was a little bit different at the time um there's always never really been a lot of humor in the captain america movies i know there's there's some asides but i mean those are like 30 minutes between those type of quips. It's not right. laugh a minute. It's not the Tony Stark thing like that. It's not Joss Whedon, really. Exactly. It's not the Guardians of the Galaxy. So this this is one of the first trailers for a movie that Marvel's put out that really no jokes to be had. Right. So, it's very serious. Yeah. But, I mean, Marvel has the formula down. They know how to uh, appeal to both the nerd and the mainstream, which, you know – that's what you need to make movies big, and especially niche characters like Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange uh, is, I, I would say, no less on the level of you know Ant Man or Guardians of the Galaxy in people knowing him. He's probably better known than Ant Man or Guardians of the Galaxy, to tell you the truth. So, I, I mean, it, it, Guardians of the Galaxy had no recognition, and somehow Marvel lent their name to it, and it was a huge hit. Yeah, because that that those Guardians of the Galaxy were really only a recent creation. Right. Uh, you know, probably the last seven years. Maybe so. I yeah. mean, I I mean, my my only real recollection of the Guardians was I have, of course, my official Marvel handbook, which I read, you know, like it was the Bible when I was a kid. I knew everything that was in it. And then there was a there was a blip in the early '90s that they they showed up in some crossovers of titles I read, but it was you know Yondu and Vance Astro and, from the year three thousand. Yeah. yeah. From the exactly yeah. exactly. So yeah, I, so when it came along, I was like, oh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Heard the name. Didn't know any of the characters, even though you know Groot was a, Groot was one of the first Marvel characters. He they, he was invented in the nineteen fifties. Was he one of the Mar Marvel monsters or something like that? So, something. If you if you Google, you know, uh, it, no, I I saw a weird cover and that Rocket was was you know late sixties and Star Lord was from the seventies and blah blah blah. So these are some characters that Drax the Destroyer was an old timey character. Gamora was from the eighties, I think. So they were very hodgepodge. But Tales to Astonish number thirteen. Gro 1960, oh, with yeah. With Groot, yeah. Do you see? And he's a big, he's big on it. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll share it on we'll share it on the page. Interesting. Yeah. So, I, if if anybody can do it, Marvel can. I've got a lot of yeah. faith in them. I mean, and like I said, I I. I I'm excited about this because it's going to be doing something different, and I, I if this succeeds, I think we're going to see, you know, like I talked about earlier with you and John, um, you know, potentially the 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 was it the Sons of Midnight series with Blade and uh, Ghost Rider and uh, Vampire or Werewolf by Day by Night, and then more by, day, by day Night or Midday. Yes, yes. Uh, Son of Satan, maybe Damien Hell. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so there you go. You know, that, even, that, that would be pretty amazing. Yeah, and unfortunately, well, you could have what's her name, the Hellcat, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Maybe, yes. Have her come over. So I think that'd be kind of cool. So more to come. But uh, if you are not a huge hero fan, this might be the Marvel movie for you. Could be. All right. Well, I'll tell you for sure. This uh, this next one uh, is going to be for a hell of a lot of people, especially some people in this this household I reside in. And this would be Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. We got a second trailer pretty recently. Todd, this one snuck up on me because I I didn't know it was there. I had seen the first one. Um, and this is a telling of a tale in what looks to be Depression era New York City uh, of a uh, I, I got the feeling a disgraced. Hogwarts student played by Eddie. What's his name? Eddie Redmayne. Eddie Redmayne. Um, I, I, you know, the trailer makes him sound like he is a favorite of Albus Dumbledore, but he did something to disgrace himself and he got the boot. So now he's showing up in New York City with a case that has some monsters in it <laughs> and uh, and getting into misadventures there. So, um, pretty exciting stuff uh, Todd and I know we, we've talked about this quite a bit, but um, I know that Initially, you know, some skepticism uh, exists around continuing and treading light and, you know, making a prequel out of it. But this is really a lot different. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, because this isn't about Hogwarts. This isn't about young students and, you know, going through their school and education. This is about uh, – and, and what I, I, I'm really excited about this one because it's taking the world of Harry Potter – and realizing it, you can go beyond just a single school and a single person. You can realize that this world is much bigger. And yeah, I mean, it's he's he's apparently going out to chronicle uh, all the beasts of you know, kind of like a, a journalist or kind of like a 
explorer in that world. Like a, a guy who collects bugs, an entomologist? Yeah, yeah, kind of like cataloging, you know, all the creatures and everything. I just think it looks really awesome. I mean, this is a part of the world we've never seen before. We've never been to the United States before in the Harry Potter universe. Um, it's they they mention Dumbledore, but you know, he was a teacher and he was a student, so it makes sense that I might name drop, but there's no indication that characters like that will show up. You won't, and I'm glad they just didn't do like, you know, before. I mean, because I mean, I guess they could have done what Harry Potter's parents, but do we really care about that? And you know, how did Tom Riddle? Because we kind of got a lot of that background information in the movies, so right. True. So, yeah. So it, to me, it seems like a natural progression of trying to find uh, a different way to go and to explore the universe. But it's it's almost in some ways like this offshoot of um, of Star Wars that's going on right now, this Rogue One that we're going to see, because you've got to get away from the Skywalkers and the Force and the big struggle that took us through seven movies now. So it's the same thing. There were seven, eight Harry Potter films. And um, to break away from that, there are a lot of other stories to tell. So that this is obviously, and I'm sure it'll be enormously successful, so it'll be the first of many, uh, in a dynasty that will show us other aspects of the wizarding world or the wizarding u- cinematic universe or whatever the hell you want to call it. The, the, the Rowling's verse. Now, was this, um, was this based off of a book that's out there, or is this a original story? Screenplay? Yeah, it was okay. a short story. I mean, so maybe this is going to be like, you know, I don't know if the, I don't want to say they're going to use like the, the Hobbit where they're going to take this book and turn it into three movies, but I'm thinking it's just the book was really a a small story in the life of this character where it's like there'll be elements from that short story, but it's more about, hey, this is a guy and this is his adventures and things like that versus, it, you know, we're trying to take, you know, complete portions of this book and stretch it out. I think it's really more than that. And, you know, the fact that this is taking so far in the past um, versus like the prequels and, and the side stories it's still within a those movies are still within a 30 year window really where this right. is you know this is going you know i don't know 70 years in the past right so really uh, you know all the kids are you know yet to be conceived <laughs> and they're paying their parents and their too. parents yeah so <laughs> yeah, like right. you, you can stay away from that you can do show some really cool things because um you know there's more to the world like i said than just a school and uh you know Voldemort. so it's kind of cool yeah, right, right, cool. right. Yeah, yeah. And there is a there is a um a a play that um J.K. Rowling's wrote, which is kind of like a pseudo sequel to uh the Harry Potter uh movies. It's called Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. It's a play, it's gonna be on Broadway, and it's gonna be done in two parts. Ooh. So th- they are doing a a sequel, and it is about Harry Potter um being a an employee at the Ministry of Magic. So you are getting a sequel, it's just as a play uh, that's going to be on Broadway, most likely, if it's good. Um, so you'll get that as well. If you really like Harry Potter himself and that universe in that time. But, don't yeah. worry, it's still canon. And it's two <laughs> parts, which I just don't understand. Right. <laughs> like, really? You're making wow. it two parts versus one? So, oh, well. Interesting. Wow. More to come on Weird. that. Yeah. So, so breaking from uh, trailers, we actually do have some movie news. Um, Charlie, yes. you got the first one. Yes, yes, yes. We have a title and a little bit of uh, more official information about the return of Spider-Man and really his, uh, his, his first solo film within the Sony-Disney partnership in the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. So the new Spider-Man film, which we're going to see in 2017, is going to be called Spider-Man Homecoming, a nod to the fact that this is taking Peter Parker uh, back to his high school roots, but thankfully not... Thank God, an origin story because I just don't think we could we could suffer through another one of those. So, um, yeah, so we're going to um, you know th- they're going to take Spider Man kind of back to plan, deal with him being a young man, looking at some of those teenage problems. You know, hopefully not in too much of a CW fashion. You know, the puberty, just, we got to yeah, see the puberty exactly when it's time to change. Um, so it's looking like we're going to get Iron Man in this film. So we're going to see Tony Stark. Um, Peter Parker is Tom Holland. Aunt May is Marissa Tomei, which I'm still kind of struggling with because she just doesn't really, say, you know, I think about Aunt May, I think of Rosemary Harris from the Sam Raimi films, or I think of Sally Field uh, from the uh, uh, Andrew Garfield films. Now she's Marissa Tomei. She just seems to be getting younger and sexier. I just, I, I don't get that. That, I don't was, know, that was always the plan, right? <laughs> to, to, to sexy up Aunt May. That's right. Because Aunt May really is about as sexy as her own Madam Web. No offense. <laughs> well, you know, they maybe they have like could have some. Oh, that would have been a great team up, right? Aunt May and Madam Web. Aunt May and Madam Web. Sexy Adventures in College. Yeah, right. Se- sexy. Yeah, oh, right. It's a, it would be a prequel tale. Yeah. 
That would be pretty cool. So this is very exciting. Of course, uh, Spider-Man being set up by his uh, appearance in Captain America Civil War, which comes out on May 6th. I bought our tickets on Friday night. We're going on May 5th. Front row, full reclined seats for uh, April and myself and Nathaniel. So I couldn't be more excited um, to see my favorite superhero character uh, get his his just due, which I, I don't know for a fact that that's what this is going to be. But because, you know, they're being teamed up with Disney and the MCU and, and they have such a great track record for taking some decent care of these characters that that is going to be passed along to Spider-Man as well. So this is very big for me. So I'm really excited. Uh, we will see this film on July 7th of next year, directed by John Watt. So I'm not really familiar with his work. Don't know. Um, I do know they have cast some of his classmates, which uh, they're definitely going in international flair. There's uh, one of the, the, the one of his male classmates was in the, oh, the Wes Anderson movie about the hotel. Can't remember what it was called. Uh, uh, Best Budapest. No, no, that was that was a Helen Mirren like feel good okay. movie. No, but um, but it was uh, yeah. he's he's an Indian uh, actor, which is kind of cool. And then Zendaya, uh, she's African American, I believe. Uh, she's like a Nickelodeon star. She's going to be one of his other classmates. So um, it should be fun. And like I said, I, I always got frustrated with the Spider-Man movies because they always wanted to rush him out of high school. Like right. we, we can't stay here because we've got to go on to bigger, better things of him like working crappy jobs and like going to go college. I don't know. I thought there was right. ample, ample opportunity to have fun adventures in high school. It's a, it's a great time because you're changing. Your experiences are always a lot of fun. Um, yeah, it's, I think it's cool. I mean, they could do all the movies, all the Spidey movies, and and, and really, I mean, because what are we going to do? We're gonna, all the things we're going to eventually go into. We've already seen kind of elsewhere, right? We're going to see right. like, him and Mary Jean, Mary Mary Jean, Mary, Mary Jean, Jane. Mary Mary Jean is not my lover. Yes, Mary Jean, uh, Mary Mary Jane, and then uh, we're going to get uh, Gwen Stacy. So yeah, I don't know how they're going to mix that up because they're going to have to introduce some of those elements, the Harry Osborne thing. I mean, are they just going to say? Yeah, what are they? I don't know. That's the that's the weird part. It's like got to be. They've got to be very careful that they don't tread the same. Path. Well, you know, if and you know, here I'm digging deep, but all those characters that you mentioned, the the earliest of of which which was um, uh, Gwen Stacy and Harry Osborn were both people Peter met on his first day of college. Oh, okay. We're talking issue thirty five. Okay. Okay, so and the, that first few years of uh, of continuity uh, in the Amazing Spider-Man comic was um, was pretty much happened in real time. So he was 15 when it started. You know, he's the first 12 issues were 12 months. The next 12 issues were 12 months, and then you know he he graduated right around the late you know issue number 27, 28. So it was you know it, the con the continuity stuck to real time. Yeah. So really, they could very easily have a first film with none of those characters that you mentioned. They could have Betty Brant, Liz Allen, because those were the two females who were a part of his world at that time. So they could just toss all that stuff out. No Green Goblin, though. Well, Green Goblin did come in and in the second year of the book, but he wasn't really a major character until a little bit later on. So really, they could throw out all of those elements that really people are familiar with because of the two Spider-Man franchises, which by the box office were both pretty successful, but I think pretty much reviled by most of the superhero, most of the comic book reading community, uh, is just being kind of flashy and dumb. I don't know. So you're right. It's it's nice to have this uh, air of mystery. I'm glad to hear that they're taking it back to plan and that we're not getting an origin story because another origin story would be completely insufferable. Yeah. And maybe if if they do this the right way, and I think this could be a cool way to do it, um, they could do a lot of those story beats but as like flashbacks like in between films like you'd say you fast forward like the next film is two years later or something like that have like kind of like as you missed it or this is what happened some some key right. things elements kind of like just to give you the background of it but not actually do a movie based on those stories right um you know that the whole venom thing could be yep it happened eddie brock blah 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 but you don't have to see the whole thing on film Right, but, but Venom does exist, and then he goes into Flash Thompson because that's more of a modern story element. Right, exactly. Yeah, so, I, mean, I would I like. I would like that. So you acknowledge those things, but they are not. They're not the focus of a movie. You see a flashback within the movie, or maybe he's watching some TV footage, or Shield. You know, yeah. Shield is involved in some way. Like he's saying, "Well, this is the file we have on Venom," and blah blah blah. Now he's escaped again. 
Yeah, or we could say, you know, he he thinks about, you know, he lost Gwen Stacy or something, or he sees like he goes to visit Gwen's grave and he has a flashback to kind of like those key right. beats that happened. So you, right. like I said, so you can hit new ground, new territory, but right. acknowledge the past and have all those story mounts be, you know, canon. Yeah, I would love to see in this film if they're trying to establish new enough characters and and stick to a window that leaves out everything else that's been tread upon you know not all the same villains not all dr octopus and the bad version of venom and the sandman and blah, 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 and all the things the lizard and who the electric jamie jamie fox's electro which was Ugh. just an abomination Jeez. oh yeah oh boy dane DeHaan's green goblin was nothing to yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. His, his acne yeah yeah, exactly. Green acne. Oh, God. Well, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad. I'm very glad that that is one dynasty that failed because I think it would have just given us given us more crap. Yeah. Sometimes you got to fail to succeed. Yeah. 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 Speaking very, of which. <laughs> very wise. Oh, speaking speaking of failures looking to succeed. Todd, why don't you tell us about this next story? Uh, yeah. I mean, this was I think everyone knew this was an inevitability, but um, Ben Affleck has been announced, been confirmed that he will be directing and starring in a Batman solo film. Um, and I'm not sure if we got a confirmed date um, and we don't know exactly anything about this movie yet. Is it going to be a flashback movie prequel? Please don't let it be a prequel mm -hmm. movie. Don't let it be like, oh, we're going to show you exactly how Robin died because I don't care. Now, what could be really cool is he... They base it on a classic Batman story we haven't seen before on film. Maybe the Court of Owls would be a lot of fun. Ooh, yes, amazing. Yeah, we could maybe see, uh, you know, uh, the was it uh, the the Long Halloween? Is it the Long Halloween? You know, I don't know that I've ever read that story. It's but, a, it's really yeah. Batman being a detective and basically follows Batman as he's investigating a serial killer that kills. Uh, someone on every holiday. So Halloween and different things like that. And it's really Batman being a detective. He's having to figure out who's killing these people. Different take, and we haven't seen that with Batman, where Batman's typically always taken on, you know, really crazy villains and things like that. But to see him really do some detective work and take on a case like that, a smaller scale Batman, I mean, he could have like side things where he, he oh, he's on his, as he's tracking this down, he takes down the scarecrow or something like that, whatever. But we don't really know this. I mean, another thing they could do is they could really embrace, you know, him building up the Bat family. We could have him finding a Robin, you know, Damien, you know, he mm -hmm. maybe Batman. They acknowledge, like I said, with Spider Man, maybe they don't have to do a movie about Rochelle Ghoul, but they could basically say, you know, he could have flashbacks to when he met up with Talia and things like that. Mm -hmm. Here's Damien, by the way. They managed to do that. I mean, as you know, divisive an issue as Batman versus Superman has turned out to be, they did a fairly good job of just touching his origin beats and not making it a full so, on movie so labor labor filled that you yeah. had to be like, why is he so angry? Blah 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 blah. You know, I mean, it's kind of Batman yeah. origin. Who doesn't know it? But yeah. yeah, perhaps yeah, he could sit and have be thumbing through newspaper clippings and having a flashback or something, and then get it and move on. Yeah, I mean, I think Batflick was, uh, you know, along with uh, Gal Gadot, although with her being in such a short period of, of the film and the where she where she showed up in the movie. I mean, obviously, everybody thinks she was a highlight, but you know, if she was in it so short uh, of a period of time, and what she did was pretty cool. That when you actually get Gal Gadot being on screen and talking a lot and having mm -hmm. a movie on, I mean, will people that be as excited? We don't know. But Ben Affleck, I think, did a great job, uh, filled out the suit really well. And, uh, you know, I, I think he, they could do some really cool things. Jeremy Irons is great. You know, build up that bat verse. You know, we don't know who. Well, we do know that uh, uh, what's his name is going to be Jim Gordon. Um, uh, J.K. Simons. Exactly. Simmons. So yeah. it's going to be a good. We know there'll be a good cast. And with yeah. Ben Affleck, he's a good director. And we just worry about who the writer is going to be. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, get Scott Snyder on this. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, go back to uh, go, you know, cross the cross the picket, cross the street uh, to the comic uh, side uh, of the actual writers, and let them do what they do best. Let yeah. them write a story that uh, you know a, that you can do a screenplay treatment on, and have somebody put it on the page. But exactly. With some decent words and some decent uh, uh, you know story pacing that that really makes sense. So yeah. I'm all about that. So anyway, I agree with you. I think that I said. Ben Affleck was great as Batman. Yeah. I thought it was one. I thought it was one of the better parts of the duration of that film. Um, it, you know, the whole thing obviously didn't come together in a way that that critically anybody enjoyed for the most part. Um, but I thought there were there were bits and pieces 
of that film, and he was a great bit. So I'll be very excited to see what direction this goes in for sure. Yeah, yeah, I am too. Uh, and, you know, as we touch on still more hero, I think we had uh, only one non-hero f- <laughs> bit of news this week. Yeah. Uh, we have another piece of hero news, and that's that there will be a new uh, Marvel TV series going to be on Freeform, formerly known as ABC Family. I always have to say that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we, we in, in our last episode last week, I had to have you remind me what the hell it was. Yeah. Even though I we had had that conversation before, I was like, well, what is Freeform? And yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's ABC Family. Um, and again, we talked about this last week in our last episode, but what... Um, so yeah, the format of this being on Freeform... You know the uh, the natural kind of compunction is that it's going to follow the uh, young adult format of your Pretty Little Liars and your 100 or your CW shows. Um, but anyway, uh, Cloak and Dagger uh, are Spider-Man characters, spectacular Spider-Man, right about 1983, maybe episode issue. Let me see if I can pull it out of my head. 82. I'll, I'll have to look. But anyway. I'm enthused by the fact that they're Spider-Man characters, but um, what do you think the show's going to be all about? Well, apparently, um, this is the the, the synopsis. Uh, It's described as a superhero love story. The live-action interracial romance follows the duo, two teenagers from very different backgrounds, who find themselves burdened and awakened to newly acquired superpowers while falling in love. Uh, Which is not at all what it's about in the comics. I know. That that really kind of makes me worry. I know. And then Tandy can emit light daggers, and Tyrone has the ability to engulf others in darkness. They quickly learn they are better together than apart, but their feelings for each other make their already a complicated world even more challenging. So, Charlie, we will get a lot of romance. Oh, God. Set in a post, uh, Katrina, New Orleans, which is a total... Why? I mean... No, no, that was before. It was before. They were working on something before... Oh, okay. Uh, and that was what it was supposed to be set in. Uh, this has nothing to do with it. And that was what well. It said, it said it's unknown. Yeah, but that's what they connected. were in 2011. And that that was a you know right. 2011. I don't even know what was going on with Marvel at the time. And I didn't know, have any TV project. Yeah, they didn't. So I, I'm I mean, assuming the, they'll go somewhere else with it. That 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 alone scares me to death yeah. because being connected to Spider Man, they were yeah. uh, you know they were fighting in the shadows of Hell's Kitchen and in the in, in Manhattan, and it was you know very dark and gritty. So um, not that not that of course New Orleans couldn't be dark and gritty but still um so yeah this is this is um this is kind of the third uh leg of marvel tv's uh marvel's tv empire because we have the stuff on abc agents of shield agent carter you've got your netflix stuff which has been greatly acclaimed and we've certainly enjoyed it we've had those two programs and we're getting a third with luke cage and iron fist has been talked about a lot lately and then that they're all going to come together in a, a joint series so this is the the ya uh romantic uh appealing to the the, the teens and i just don't know how it's going to connect with me I don't no. know either, uh, and you know they don't have a great history of doing shows like this. They they currently have um, oh Shadow Hunters right now, which is just really bad. It's it's focused on romance. There's some fantasy elements, but it's not really well done. So hopefully they'll get better showrunners to do this. Um, and you know, I, I hate to say this, but really when a show is the main focus is on romance and there's other things around it, kind of like Outlander, that show. I, I kind of asked the question, everybody, does anybody, do any guys watch Outlander? Because it seems like that show is really reliant on the romance as the primary piece. And then the fact that it's got some time travel is just an extra part of it. I'm just worried about this. This is going to be like, oh, it's all about the romance and there's really not much story to it. Kind of like Twilight, you know? Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. What you gonna do? But this is the really the first like you know super superhero show we're getting on. I mean, we had Jessica Jones, but I would say the superhero elements are kind of secondary to it. Yeah, this is more the this is more like we're getting real real heroes that have powers. Right from the get go. Yeah. Well, regardless, I know that we will probably see it so that we can talk about it. Get the feeling this will probably hit us maybe in the fall, or maybe maybe mid season. I think it's next year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Twenty seventeen. You you will be hearing about it from us. So, all right, man. Well, that that's about all the news we could scrape together. Seems like we should ease on down the road. Knock on. Give the secret knock and the password at the Geek Easy. Talk nerdy to me. Talk nerdy to me. 
So we've got our yacht rock on. We've got some Chevassier, <laughs> like the ladies' or, man. Pour a little out for Christopher Cross. That's right. So we're ready to uh, talk some uh, geek stuff we're excited about, uh, sad about, or happy about in the, the world of geek. And uh, Charlie, uh, we wanted to just uh, recap our uh, Fantasy Movie League uh, update. Currently, Todd is... Uh, <laughs> hey, he has something to be sad about. <laughs> I am very sad, yes. Yeah, so the Fantasy Movie League, for those of you who don't know, we've talked about in the past, but basically, it's like running your own movie theater where you have eight screens, you have $1,000 to spend on movies to put on there. Whoever's uh, theater makes the most money wins, so John and I and Charlie are all doing this right now. Um, I missed the first week, but even without the first week, I am in the crapper. So, <laughs> yeah. or, or, or if you prefer to make it classy, the crappy A. Yeah, the crappy A. So this week, though, we're in week seven, so we actually decided to uh, do a, a, a mid-season additional league just to put us on equal ground, I guess. I, I guess that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, we started with week seven. This is week one of our second half league, so I guess it, it's because I wasn't in the first week previously. So this week, though, is kind of the first week we've really had some new competition in a while. Uh, we had uh, we had the Jungle Book. We also had uh, Barber Shop Part Eighty Two. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what else did we have? Anything else new? Uh, that was new. I, I mean, I would I would have to look at uh, th those were the two big ones. Yeah. Uh, of course, the boss was out last week. Uh, Batman and Superman took a massive plummet in so much that uh, the boss and Batman versus Superman tied this weekend for a box, which was only ten million. Or no, wait, excuse me, it was Batman and Superman and Zootopia has slid. But, That's I mean, right. after having uh, a reign of at least three or four weeks on top uh, and discontinued and came very close to losing out the boss in its first week beat out Batman versus Superman. So it has not been a good spread for that film. No, no, not at all. So I uh, we do have some rules, like you can't have more than uh, one movie on three screens, Um you can on, on more than three screens. More than three screens, correct. Right. So, and you have to have a minimum of four different movies. Uh, so, the rest of the league, though, they can have like I think an unlimited amount of movies on per you know on on a, on, a, on a screen. So, you potentially could have all Zootopias, and that's potentially might win you a couple weeks. So, and, and, appa and apparently, according to this, it did. It was the perfect film. Sure. So, we don't like those rules because we think it's not realistic. A theater is going to not do that because you wouldn't. That's, it's not going to show eight screens of hello my name is doris <laughs> no, <not at> all. <laughs> although the sally field movie theater might do that right yeah, in yeah. her hometown yeah so this this week though i am getting hosed i went on well as charlie said i bet on black and i certainly did this week um it went wrong uh barber shop i think will barely make about 22 million dollars so that was a franchise that kind of died and they tried to bring it back and i just don't know if it had much power um, counter programming, I guess, against the Jungle Book, and it didn't really work out very well. So, you know, I don't know how much it cost to make uh, the Barbershop movie. It probably can't be much, but it does have some big names in it. Like, you right. know, so they got to pay those guys something, right? I mean, gotta pay, they got to pay Cedric and, uh, uh, you know, Nicki Minaj. You can't just. Pay him in, uh, you know, in uh, crystal haircuts. <laughs> Get all the haircuts. In the and you know, well, I mean, there is a lot of what you know, special effects and uh, Cedric's, you know, wig physics and his <laughs> old age makeup. I don't know. Oh right, could be. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, Jungle Book is kicking butt this week. I think it's going to make over about a hundred million dollars this weekend. So, mm -hmm. wow. So that movie is getting awesome buzz, and apparently, it is one of the few movies that it is well worth it to see it in three D, kind of like Avatar uh, and those type of movies. So. Hope you enjoy, and man, I'm I'm screwed. <laughs> I'm going to be losing by almost forty million dollars. Yeah, so uh, yeah, this week is uh, crap. Uh, next week, I don't think we're getting any new movies. So, Jungle Book uh, will probably rain until Captain America comes along. Which yeah, is pretty sick. much. Yeah, I mean, there's a new kids movie coming out, uh, Ratchet and Clank, which I'm I'm actually going to take the kids. That Logan and a friend of mine and his kids were going to go see. It's called Ratchet and Clank. It's a video game. Sony, it's animated. It's a lot of fun. So, but I'm not exactly sure that will do much at the box yeah. office. Yeah. So I guess we'll see. That's all right. Well, uh, moving into the core of what's at the Geek Easy, uh, watching, uh, you know, t this week it was about uh, shows because uh, I, I, I didn't think, I, I don't know that I read 
too much that was new and different. I knew another issue of Web Warriors came out, and I'm, I'm enjoying that title, but I will I will belabor it no more. Um, but we got finales this uh, this week from iZombie. Now, Todd, where are you with iZombie? I'm like two episodes into the season. Right. Yeah. Oh, two episodes into the season. Yes, oh, my yes, goodness. Yes, I'm well. Well, I, yeah. I, my DVR did not catch these episodes the beginning oh, okay. of the season, so I was well behind, so I didn't want to just leap ahead because the right. show does have some continuity, so it's not just standalone. Definitely. So Yeah, so I'm well behind so yeah i don't really know much beyond the fact that i um uh, major was cured he is now an assassin taking right. out zombies he was hired by max rager and the, the, the max rager guy his name is not actually max rager steven max weber rager, yeah which, weber, which I, yeah. I always mix up yeah um well i will simply say that um very cool um, series finale, uh, season finale, um, <laughs> appearance by a surprise uh, musical guest whose name is a play on words hmm. that you'll appreciate. Okay, uh, or it's a riff on this musician's name uh, and the, the name of someone else involved in this. Show. Oh yes, I know uh, Rob Thomas, right? Yes, 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 yes. I had heard about that. Yeah, so that's not spoiling too much. Um, but um, really, this was a game changer episode. I mean, hmm. they they did a twist that's going to propel the show um, into a different direction um, into season three. Uh, so I thought it, it really made me uh, sit up and take notice. They aired two episodes back to back and called it a two hour finale. Oh, okay. Essentially, essentially, it was two episodes. Um, so it's good. So get caught up. Um, because the finale was pretty damn cool. Um, Gotham this week, I don't know if this was the finale or not, but it was uh, a pretty satisfactory, albeit somewhat predictable, conclusion to uh, uh, Jim Gordon's present predicament. Or I should say, you know, it's a, a level, I mean, he... I, anyway, I, I know that you, you are still trekking along, or are you I'm up? like seven episodes behind. So yeah, okay. not not a great spot, but I'm loving the show. So I, will, I won't... Yeah, I won't say much about that, but, you know, Jim gets himself into some hot water. He gets framed uh, by uh, one of the villainous characters, so I guess that's probably not giving too much away. Because um, you can probably use your imagination to figure out who it is. Um, and th this sees him getting himself out of that situation, so that was pre pretty cool. Um, and we just watched, before I jumped on here, Legends of Tomorrow, which is, I know, a show that some people have given up on. Um, but they, they use a very familiar time traveling sci-fi trope of going to the old west this week um which brought them into a connection with uh, another long suffering dc character jonah hex oh yeah <laughs> did, did josh brolin come back for it he did not oh, I, darn. It, if Meg, megan fox was there she was probably working craft services because that's where she is in her career uh, <laughs> i know she a new, new girl yeah, there you go. Yeah, All right. so, bizarre. Sorry, Megan. What 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 the hell do I know? Um, but anyway, loved it. I, I love the old west tropes. Um, you got to find out a little bit more about a burgeoning romance happening on the show. Todd, are you where are you with this show? It seems like you're behind on all the. I uh, basically, yeah. I am not one of those things with this show. I. I'm not really worried about like, oh, I missed a couple episodes. Oh, I'll just start. I'll start in. So I did watch yeah. the opening to this episode with the oh, the Wild West, and yeah. yeah, they were getting their outfits and everything was fun. And obviously, it was revealed that uh, uh, Heat Wave uh, is now or or was the uh, time bounty he was hunter. Part of the uh, was it the oh, what, Kronos? What's the, what's the, Kronos, Kronos, yeah, yes. he was part of Kronos. So that, I guess that was a weird thing back. because um, they had kind of a falling out. The one I saw was they had the falling out. Um, during the 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 Dark Archer episode, right? Um, and then I don't know, and I I did, basically just did not watch episodes since then. So, um, and I don't feel like I m missed a lot by not catching those episodes. So, you know, it's it's not so bad, and it's not such a deep thoughts kind of show they're gonna be like oh my god because they have a little you know like like most all shows uh genre shows in particular these days they have a handy little recap yep. at the beginning and that helps me out perfectly and, and you're gonna be just fine so yeah there there's a burgeoning romance between uh the ray palmer character and the ciara character oh god what's it hot girl Whatever the hell her name is. So anyway, they're connecting, but in the past, Hawk Girl uh, meets a, an older version of her past self, um, who tells her that she could never have another romance with anybody but Carter, who is the dead Hawkman. And, and so that threw a monkey in the wrench. There's a little drama around that. This show is not, you know, highfalutin, the best superhero show you're ever going to watch. Um, I enjoy the time travel aspect of it. Like I said, it makes me uh, think about. Um, web warriors the comic that i read because they're traveling dimensions and you got different characters from different times and there's you know 
little funkiness. It's a little Doctor Who meets the Avengers, and I, I enjoy the show. It, it ain't the greatest, but but I, I'm having fun with it. So, um, and I believe it just got renewed. I think so. Yeah. I mean, yes. it's, it's like sliders. It's like Voyagers. Right. I mean, and and I think the best thing that the show can do is just play with the time travel elements, make it fun, different eras, different people, have right. different, uh, you know, guest stars show up, different heroes. Just right. have fun with it. Don't make it dire and, you know, dreary. Don't give it a lot of, you know, over crazy continuity that, you know, it's like, oh, this right. happens, this happens. Have fun with it right. and, and, you know, have fun with the characters. You can get rid of characters, bring in new characters. You know? Right, Why not? or bring or bring back dead characters because exactly. they're because they're time travelers. Yeah, we so, know we know what's her name's going to be on it. What canary is going to be on it, right? Or was she already on it? Okay. Well, uh, Laurel, what right? canary? Uh, it's what, see that I hadn't heard. Obviously, Sarah is well, a character. Yeah, I thought uh, but she was going to be. A, she was going to be a alternate, or maybe she was. Was she going to be a Flash? I can't remember. She was going to be brought back as a different character in in a alternate Earth. On, on either Flash or, um, yeah, I'll have to look up that story. Probably Flash. Flash seems to be yeah, doing that kind maybe of stuff. But anyway, was, yeah. um, but anyway, next week's episode, they're doing a little bit of uh, Back to the Future, or a little little bit of the Terminator. There's a Terminator in the past that's trying to rub out our heroes when they were young. So it looks like uh, uh, Captain Lance from Arrow shows up in the past. I saw him in some of the preview clips. Interesting. So yeah, they can bring him in and bring him out. So anyway, I like the show. I'm going to stick with it, um, even though I know that that Todd has quit it and sounds like you're kind of noncommittal. But I like it. Well, John quit it, yeah, and I'm I, I'll, I'll watch it. It's fun. I mean, it's not one of the shows where I have to watch it though. So yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. So how about you? What What are you watching this week? Well, it's things I have watched. So uh, yes, 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 yeah. So Walking Dead. Uh, oh yeah, boy. We both have watched the season finale. And man, oh man, uh, it's 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 bad right now. It's it's bad for the team. Uh, they basically are in you know, over their heads, and you know it, it seems like every season ends this way lately. It's something bad happens, and I mean we had you know what the group was in the what the the train cars that one season. The terminus. Yeah, right. we had that. Now they're it's very similar here, except we know that someone on the team has been killed by uh, Negan. Yep. I mean, he's a scary dude. Not nice. Right. Yeah, I mean, and I don't know. I don't have any experience with him in the comics, so I don't know how he he's, did. He's super not nice, and he makes the governor, and even the governor in the TV show was nothing compared to the governor in the comics. No, the governor was crazy Mad Max type character. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, and he got, he and, yeah, I mean, the governor yeah. in the comics was way worse, but Negan is, uh, is terrifying in the comics, and he's not off to a great start. Uh, here and you know Rick, uh, Rick and his crew kind of got their comeuppance because they're always man. We can take anything. Let's kill this Negan. We're you know we, we're not going to deal with him. We're kick ass. You know and they finally got um, kind of their nuts handed to him. And then there is a uh, you know a lingering mystery death. Yes. And quite honestly, what's your pick? Um, there have been some rumblings. That it could very well follow what happened in the comics, and it could be Glenn because mm. you heard you heard him you heard a voice cry out after the first hit, Maggie, mm. which is why Glenn that those are his dying words as he's getting his skull smashed in and mm. issue one hundred of The Walking Dead, um, which happened a couple years ago. So I don't feel like it's a spoiler. So sorry. Yeah, because I mean, at, the, at this point, I mean, it could be. Uh, I mean, trying to think of the other characters that were with him that were kind of like secondary. Uh, is it an impact right. if you kill one of the secondary characters? Well, like, what, was you know, it Sasha? Yeah. Was it Sasha? Was one of the characters? Sasha, who's an who's, uh, a, who's yeah. a TV only. Uh, she's a TV only character. Um, the death of Denise a couple episodes back. That was actually how Abraham died, like to a T. He got an arrow through the eye. Oh, well, I didn't know. I guess yeah. I'm, I'm guess so I he, won't be surprised then when he dies. In the he's comic. outliving. I mean, Carol. Yeah, Carol uh, died early in the comics, yep. but it's still yep. kicking. But Sophia, her daughter, is still alive in the comics. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. yeah, so they, they flip it, you know, they, they do some swap outs and stuff. And of course, there's the, you know, ever present lingering that it could be Daryl and people are going to revolt and blah, blah, blah. And I don't know. Well, could, uh, could you kill a, a pregnant woman on the show? I mean, because they did in the comic. Or no, she wasn't pregnant. Um, or no, was she? Talk about yeah, Lori. Lori, Lori had the not, baby. Yeah, she had the baby. They, kill, they, killed, they the baby. killed the baby. Yeah, they yeah, killed so. her and the baby. But I think it's she got shot too far and then she to, crushed the baby. Yeah, it's yeah. probably a bridge too far to kill a pregnant woman. That's probably too right. much to do. And uh, you know, we probably think uh, you know, 
Carl is probably not going to die because they don't. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've killed kids on the show, so yeah, I don't know. Um, and you know, Daryl probably is one of those characters. Carol, uh, Daryl and Rick are probably the two characters you can't kill off, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. Rick, absolutely. But do keep in mind, Daryl uh, has always been just a product of the TV show. But he's so, and that's where we we figured do does, right. does popularity protect anyone? Because so far, who's the most popular character that's died on the show? Um, Herschel? Maybe. Yeah. It certainly wasn't Lori or Beth, because no, no. nobody cares. No. <laughs> right. No. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where that goes. And, you know, we had some interesting turn events with, you know, uh, with Carol just kind of turning her cheek of, you know, violence and things. And, yeah, it, it's different uh, how the show's going. And I, I am up to issue 90 in the comic. I, I did um, read... I think trade 15. So there's still an Alexandria. Um, right. It's a little different. I mean, the characters are treated differently. Maggie in that comic is, is, is really a different character than she is on the show. Right. Too. Yeah. She's much more, uh, not as confident, not as, you know, uh, in her, in, in her right mind, I guess is the right, right way to right. say it. So, yeah. So I guess well, I mean, you know, the, the death of Glenn definitely takes her in a direction, a different direction in the comics. Gotcha. So we'll see if that's what they want to pursue yeah. uh, in the show as well. So we'll know in October. Yeah, but, um, but, Jeffrey, it, but Jeffrey Dean Morgan is awesome. So yeah. that was a good pick for him. And uh, I will tell you, I'm, you know, in the, I, I have not the most recent trade, but the one before that, so I'm read through 24, and Negan is still around. Yeah, that's what I heard, and I read a yeah. synopsis of one of the issues, I'm like, oh, Negan's still around, so that's the longest so, they've kept a uh, villain around for a while, yeah. Yeah, exactly, I mean, 50 issues is a lot wow. in a book like this. Okay. So, um, yeah, so, all right, so anyway, yeah, I kind of took you over, but uh, I know you, you, there was a finale of, like, your favorite show this last week. Yeah, Magicians uh, ended, it, I think it was 13 episodes, 12 episode somewhere around there and uh it's funny because chris started reading the books uh by lev grossman she started reading the first one and she's like man this is really different than uh than the book and in, in certain instances where a certain character they pr- totally took a different way i'm like okay and i was just wondering if you know is the first season the first book or so she has not read that far into it so we don't know but um this show is fantastic i it's probably one of my favorite shows um not just recent probably one of my favorite shows of all time it is so well done. It is so unexpected every week. Um, they manage material so well, and every episode is a cliffhanger. You're like, what? Really? Crazy. And it, it, and it does so many things so so well. Uh, I know you said, Charlie, you're not into like fantasy, but this is this is not like fantasy fantasy. This is like, like Jessica Jones style, like Harry Potter. This is dark, gritty, realistic. But there's magic, so it's it's mm. it's different. It's not like there's there's dragons and things like that. No, totally different. It's it's much more grounded than Harry Potter is, but it has magic. So just think about it. it's, it's kind of like like I said, Jessica Jones, where there's superpowers, but that's not really the focus of it. But it makes things very interesting. They're swearing in it, but they do the same, very similar to what the Goldbergs do when they swear. So they just bleep it out. Kind of bleep it. Kind of <laughs> like make it kind of silent. Kind of. It's weird. It's it's a very weird thing, but it, it works because it you know these are how these characters would 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 act and things like that. It's very adult, very sometimes very horrific and very sexy. So it does all those things really well. So I I think you would really you and Ray April would really enjoy it just because it takes the 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 material very seriously. But there's some fun elements. It's unexpected. The characters are all enjoyable. They all. Uh, develop and become different and uh this one uh, and it's it's interesting because was chris you know she's not a big game of thrones fan she doesn't really watch it um and she said this is like the ending of uh game of thrones i'm like you're kind of right so oh my it's shocking it's definitely shocking. shocking uh certain characters will drive you insane certain characters are like oh my god and yeah I don't know where it's available currently. It's on. It was on Sci-Fi, obviously, but I'm not sure okay. if it's like if it's. On it won't demand. be. Won't be on demand. I mean, I'll I'll go out there and check it. It might just be like right. the last five episodes though, because they do that a lot of the like on the free services. Might be on Hulu. I don't know. Maybe. I'll send April yeah. a note and she can check it while we're sitting here. But yeah, I think you'll like it because it's very adult, very grounded, but with some really cool elements of magic and you know. Uh, coolness it's very cool so if you really want a show that's going to be different um it's 
it's my wife and I can't wait to watch the show every week, and obviously it's gone. So, but it was renewed for a second season, so that's a good you know showing. It was renewed very early. That was you know going to be coming back. So love it. You know, we actually have Hulu. I did that. We did it a couple months, and I canceled it. So, but it doesn't end until the end of the month. So if it's there, yeah. I don't know. Is sci-fi stuff on Hulu? I wonder. It might be. I, I you know I truly oh. do not know. It's so hard to find out where things go and how yeah. long they're available on whatever service it gets crazy right. so yeah yeah which is it's, crazy. Crazy. it's, it's crazy. crazy man it's crazy yeah and lastly i just wanted to hit on um a comic book that i think we've talked about before but i'd never read and i'd heard good things about it. it's called lumberjanes um it won like a an award for like the best indie comic it apparently won an award for like a glad award which is you know the gay lesbian blah 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 um group it's like they they were things for having positive portrayals of of people you know of alternative uh, lifestyles things like that um really quickly to summarize what it is it's basically uh, a girl scout type group where they uh, are in a world that's at this camp that's very fantastical where they fight uh, or they discover like uh abominable snowmen uh sea serpents and things like that uh the characters are all very uh, dynamic all have their own personalities uh the book it, the, while the covers look pretty cool the inside art's kind of scratchy kind of like eh, it's kind of looks rushed and it really didn't grab me i, I kind of felt like i knew what they were going for but none of the characters thought were you know they just felt like you know you've been there done that it's kind of like a adventure time style um wackiness weirdness hipness and you know, it's funny because they said this, you know, this book won this GLAD award, and I, you know, I didn't notice anything about characters necessarily being, you know, gay or anything like that. But uh, one of the characters did have like a sh shaved side of her head. So I'm like, is it she gay because she has that hairstyle? I don't know. <laughs> it's very odd. Um, so I don't know. I mean, but I mean, maybe it's not for me. Maybe it's this is a book for girls because this is all female characters. And, and one thing that did drive me nuts the only male characters in this book at all. We're the bad guys. So not a huge fan of that. I don't want to yeah. feel like it's like a L little too heavy handed. Yeah. Cause at first they're portrayed as being, Oh, you know, it's like the, it's like the boy scout group, but they show up and either they're possessed or demons, but those are the only, uh, uh, male characters and they're shown in a negative light. So I kind of like, I don't know if I dig that, you know, right. that, you know, the only way you can show a uh, male character is if they're in a negative light. So that doesn't really right. obviously equal. Well, yeah. So they're, they're flipping the script and, and trying to, trying to take a stereotype and make it an absolute. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I, I wouldn't really. Yeah, Cause you, you rarely have like, it's a guy centric book and you know, the only female character is the villain, you know? Right, exactly. Which is not, which is absurd. Yeah, it's kind of, it's it kind of weird. Ju it just seems very heavy. So, but I would say this. I mean, I think if you have a uh, a, a daughter, um, and maybe guys would like this too. I don't know. You, the first issues on Comicsology, Charlie, it's free. Um, you could check it out if you want. Um, it's one of those free issues. If anybody wants to read it, yeah, Comicsology has it. But maybe it's for girls. Maybe that's just one of those things. It's it's really a girl book, and check it out. But I have heard guys like it too. So maybe it was just not for me. So. See, there you go, Lumberjanes. I think there's 12 issues out right now, and the first trade paperback's out there. So, check it out. Check it out. All right. Well, sounds like that's the end of the Geek Easy. But Todd, wait. I think I hear the hotline. Yes. Oh, oh ha ha! Remember me, old chum? You jolly devil. Well. <laughs> I, that was a long-awaited uh, review by Cynthia. She talked about this. We talked about this uh, this this movie coming out on Sci-Fi, Dead Seven, the boy bands taking on zombies and pseudo Wild West, uh, funny, haha, -ha, funny, bad, funny, weird, ironic. Don't know <laughs> if we're it's it's a joke or it's just bad. Cynthia seemed to like it for shits and giggles. So. If you're why into this, not? Why, why not? Why not? It, it's free. Yeah. So thank you, Cynthia. And as you know, we did change our hotline. So um, if you want to leave a number, we'll update that number at the end of the show. Indeed. All right. Well, next, it's time to dust off the, the old mind meldery machine and put our heads together and talk about... Do a Jedi mind meld. Je je Jedi mind meld. Do a Jedi mind meld. Well, we've got our mind meld gear on, and uh, this week we're going to talk about a uh, standalone comic story. You don't get these very often. Typically, all comics are 
blending in from one issue to the next to tell an overarching story. Well, this time we do have a one shot. It's it's a double size issue, I believe. Um, it was an anniversary issue, uh, Action Comics seven seventy five. It's titled Truth, Justice, and the oh sorry, it's called What's So Funny About Truth, Justice, and the American Way? A play on. Uh, Elvis... but, 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 let me okay, Charlie. Because you were about to say that it's a play on an Elvis Costello song, and you would be incorrect. That song was written and first recorded by a gentleman named Nick Lowe, another British artist. Mm. And friend of Elvis Costello, who later took it and turned it into a hit. Ah, uh-huh, okay, I did not know. Ah, uh-huh, you see, you're, you're you're treading on my area, so I had to jump in and, and kick some knowledge. But you go right ahead. Yes. So a little bit of music trivia before then, and uh, you know, obviously, Superman is one of those characters that I would say, and people always say he's hard to write for. You know, he's just too powerful, and you know, he just doesn't make any sense these days. He's not really that interesting of a character, and I would disagree. I just don't think he's well written. That's the problem. I don't think there's been a lot of great Superman stories because typically he's not had a lot of great writers on him. Um, the majority of good Superman comics typically are standalone ty- uh, standalone stories rather than ongoing arcs. Um, you mm-hmm. get a lot of Elseworlds, which are great Superman stories like uh, Red Sun, uh, The Nail, things like that. Um, All-Star Superman we talked about before. Uh, majority of those are written by really great writers uh so that's going to be a problem with superman when you've got it you know you're up to 775 comics back then this comic came out in 2001 you know you're gonna have a lot of stinkers and you're gonna have a lot of problems especially with superman being so powerful um you know it's going to be hard to find a foil for him so really what do you do with him and there's been so many stories in the past how are you going to tell new stories with him so that's just a little background. Plus, also now we've seen him on the screen in Batman vs Superman. Unfortunately, he just hasn't been. I, I don't think they've gotten to the core of his character in the movies the last couple of years. I would say probably uh, Return of Superman was probably the best presentation of Superman we've had. I can't disagree. Yeah. I enjoyed that movie yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. So I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that Superman. It was just not a great movie. Uh, probably not enough action. So. Moving on from that. So this comic, written by Joe Kelly, uh, penciled by actually two artists, which I think is one of the, the few bad things about this book is you didn't have just one artist, Doug Monkey and Lee Bermejo. I wish it would have been one artist because – Yeah, that, that can be tough. It, it can be hard because some characters don't look the same, so it's like, is that the same guy? So uh, it, it's something you see more in comics these days because rush deadlines and re- artists just aren't as – capable of putting out a comic uh, out every month it seems like it seems like they're just not as the you know the the the, the writing or drawing factory is you know uh, jack kirby and mm. artists like that so but so on and so forth that's enough about the comic business but this book was really cool it's actually a uh, animated series called superman versus the elite it was a movie back i think probably three or four years ago yeah, i so, remember seeing it so if you're more of a fan of the actual like uh, animated movies or just movies more than comics you can check out the story there. But this was really cool because it was uh, we were introduced um, to a new group of villains or, well, characters called the Elite, uh, Manchester Black and a couple of other characters that had unique powers. And their premise was that they uh, were tired of villains committing crimes and basically not being truly punished or taken care of. They keep, you know, these villains who would escape from prison, they'd go out and commit the same crime. That was their biggest problem with most heroes because – they they'd fix the problem for a week and then the villains would be back out and would kill people and these heroes would still go down the same path of just putting them back in jail and killing them. It's kind of like the joker the joker right. gets out kills more people superman won't kill him but then more people suffer because of it right yeah so that's the premise and uh superman uh, is quickly shown that a lot of the public is a big fan of the elite's uh methods they're dark they they take care of the problem. They're brutal, and Superman, you know, starts feeling like maybe he's outdated. Maybe his methods. Maybe the world doesn't need a Superman anymore. And so it's kind of that. Uh, it's it's a thought piece. I mean, it's not a lot of action on the page, although there's some really cool action elements to it. It's more about a conversation of what is Superman's place in 2001. This actually came out before 9/11 too. Mm-hmm. Uh, so with 9/11, that kind of changed our perspective on you know the world in general. Right. Um, so it, I think it's a, it's it's really a unique tale. Um, in it, 
we we talked about this. John actually read this as well, and he kind of gave us his thoughts. He wasn't a huge fan of it. He mentioned like he didn't like the fact that there was a big monster. Well, the big monster basically got killed. We didn't see really any of that action happening. It was really um, method. You know, it was basically the ethics of Superman versus the ethics of the elite. Mm-hmm. And that constant struggle. So I really liked it. I liked the resolution. This was a double comic. I, I really liked the book, and I think it's one of uh, Superman's best stories in a long time. You know the um, the morality play, and in, in this it's, it's a trope that comes up a lot in sci-fi, a lot in, in fantasy and comics. Of you know where where does the vigilante draw their line, or is your hero a vigilante? So a lot of talk I've heard on podcasts in the last couple of weeks about Batman versus Superman is that Batman is brutal. He's he's breaking necks and killing people. And and when did he take this turn? And you got to remember that Batman, a character with a story seventy five year past, started out as a guy who carried a gun. And then he didn't, and then it was Batman 66, and then we got Tim Burton Batman, who kills like 15 or 20 people in that movie. He just he throws a guy down the bell tower, and he just, you know, there, there are different angles and twists and, and ways that characters are written when you have a character like Batman or Superman that has been around for so long. But Superman, you're right. It can be, it, it can appear to be a little bit bland because he's a character who's such a Boy Scout. Um, the same can be said of Captain America. I mean, it was a well, really well, but big... Captain America is a soldier. He knows he can kill people. But Spider Man, well, Spider Man, I would say, is the character well, that's what more I was, like. What that, I was right? going to say about Captain America is that uh, you know my favorite Captain America run when I was a kid was Mark Gruenwald, and he was on the title for something like fifteen years. He wrote an, an, uh, an issue pretty early on. It was in the, I think three twenty one where Cap has to shoot uh, an enemy soldier to save his own life. He picked up a gun and just auto- automatically shoots him, and he's so destroyed by it that the whole next issue is made up with him trying to make restitution for it. So, But in the movies, he's portrayed as a soldier who's running around shooting guns and killing yeah. Hydra agents and throwing them into propellers and doing stuff, so... It's tough, but Superman, when has Superman ever been portrayed as anything like that? He just never really has no. been until we get Man of Steel where, you know, he does. He kills Zod, but he's de- he's de- so distraught about it. He's not like Batman. He was so he was torn. He was torn yeah. between. And, and I always go back to this and Bobby brought this up when we talked about it. You know, what are you supposed to do with Zod? There's no Superman jail. There's right. what are you going to do with them? You can't stop him. And he doesn't care. Is I'd never cared about human life. So, right. yeah, the the only way to stop him is to kill him. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So, he, so it's a necessary evil. And he did it. So. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you're right. S- Superman can be boring in that regard if he's always oh, got to do the right thing. And, you know, mom and apple pie and yada, yada, yada. I, I was raised in Kansas. Um, but, d- you know, does he make the tough choices? He is interesting when he's he's set to make the tough choices. Um, that's where I think Superman gets interesting. So I enjoyed this tale as well. I'm I, I, I read I, unfortunately I read it a few weeks back and I guess it didn't stick with me as well as it it did with you because you probably read it several times um, because you'd obviously read it in the past. But um, but yeah, I, I mean I have always loved Superman from back in the Chris Reeve days. And um, but you're right, he's he's a little wooden um, until you mix things up a little bit and when he gets his. Uh, his uh you know virtue put to the test in a situation like this it makes the character interesting so i would i would recommend checking it out and it is available on comiXology which is how you and i read it exactly so, so it, yeah. is a, it is available there so if you if you like what we what we're yipping and yapping about action comics volume one number 775 from march of 2001 check it out oh uh, yeah so uh you know like we said Check out the comics. Love them. If you have any suggestions of uh, stuff you'd like Charlie and I and John uh, to talk about in the future, things you'd like us to review, let us know, and we'll add it to the docket. Uh, Please do. But uh, I think now, Charlie, it's time to check out the epilogue. It's time for the epilogue. Uh, We're basically wrapping up the podcast, but wanted to touch on one uh, or two things that are really different than our normal discussions in the podcast. And uh, for me, it's been a couple of family outings we've had lately. Um, Last, uh, the the previous week, we went and saw Marvel Universe Live, the family. Mm, Yeah. And if you're not familiar with this, this is basically uh, a stadium type uh, performance of a live action Marvel drama. Yeah, lots of, as my son is saying right now, it's lots of people on motorcycles. So yeah, um, this was basically all of the Marvel characters 
uh, on the stage of the Target Centers where we went and saw it. Uh, really cool backgrounds, really cool special effects, uh, live actors doing real stunts on motorcycles with uh, video back screens and things like this. And uh, it's it's fun. We went to uh, something similar a few years called called Batman Live, which was awesome as well. A uh, big stadium show with Batman and all the different villains. And I thought they did some really cool stuff. And, and what they did was they took all of the uh, the Marvel animated actors and they had them do all the voice acting. So the actors that were actually on display there were actually just mouthing because they are doing a lot of, you know, punching, kicking, jumping, riding. Uh, so you did have... Uh, you know those those uh, voice actors you're familiar with doing the that show, and it was cool. It had Hydra uh, with the Red Skull as one of the villains. It had um, Aim. It had um, I'm trying to think who else. Uh, oh, the Sinister Six with the Green Goblin. Oh, nice. Had Rhino, Lizard, Electro. Uh, you know, so you had to throw these people in, and all the characters were crazy. You had Storm. You had Wolverine. You had Captain Marvel. So they really covered all their bases, and they had a lot of fun. They did some really unique things with a lot of the backgrounds and everything like that. But it was a blast. Lots of families there. It's a traveling show. I think it's been going on for about a year and a half. So. Yeah, we had it. Uh, I think we had it here in GR uh, the week before you guys got it because it was on our morning news. So our morning news gal was was there yapping with a guy who was a local uh, originally, but was part of the traveling production. I can't remember which. Oh, he played Loki. The guy who played oh, Loki okay. is, from Grand, is from West Michigan, oh, which nice. is pretty cool. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. It, was, it was a lot of fun, uh, well worth uh, – you know, the outing, and they even had like $15, you know, tickets if you really wanted to see it. Got affordable. So they do that. Oh. It's, it's fun. It's really, really a good experience. Uh, the other thing I did was my birthday was yesterday. So, Yay! Um, <laughs> thank you. How, how old are you, Todd? I 20, am 29 a, for the 12th time. 14 backwards. Um, 14 backwards. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so my wife took me out Friday. We got a babysitter for my son, and we went to a murder mystery uh, dinner. It was interesting. I've been to one before where all the actors that were doing it were basically doing everything. And you were just watching it, looking at everything, and then you figured out you got dinner, and then you would write down who did it, um, and that was it. And then you'd, you know, you'd either win or you lose. This one was different. Um, there were actors, but they actually, uh, as people came in, they gave uh, people... Uh, they pulled people aside and said, you're going to be one of the suspects. So they actually had non-actors as well involved. And then all of the audience would have to go around and actually ask the suspects questions. You had money to bribe people to get answers. And there were uh, little uh, vignettes where they would act out scenes and things like that. And it was okay. Um, we kind of felt like it was not great because the people that were selected to be suspects were obviously not actors. I think they were kind of like, I just came here to have fun with my family. And <laughs> it was so, you know, I've seen it both ways. And I think I preferred the other way because it was more like uh, dinner theater versus this was more like interactive. You get up and we we actually won. We actually guessed who the, the, the murderer was. Um, we were sitting down with another couple at the table. So that was another part that was a little awkward because we're with people we don't know. So it's not like you can always, I mean, it's nice to meet people and things, but if you don't have, a really good connection with the other couple that's at the table. It just feels awkward because then you can't really have separate conversations and enjoy yourself. So it was different. I'm glad we got a deal on the tickets, but um, I, I, I love murder mysteries and I think uh, some of these are successful. Some of these weren't this one, not as successful, but I still think it was a fun time to go out and try something new. Sweet. Yeah, that is a company that I don't know if it's based here, but they, they certainly have a location uh, here in Grand Rapids. And I know a lot of people who work there, a lot of people who uh, are part of our group. So uh, shout out to the people at the Murder Mystery Company. Yeah, I think it's a chain throughout all the United States. And this is a different group called Grimprov. Uh, oh, okay. That does this one. Grimprov. So, yeah. So if, if you're cool. interested, it's it's a fun outing to do something different. Neat. All righty. Well, nothing for me this week except to say thank you, as always, friends, for joining us. As always, we are a, a best friend, uh, a distant uh, but yet close cousin of the Secret Friends uh, Facebook community and podcast page. Find us over on Twitter at Secret Friends U. And as always, give a buzz over to the hotline. Leave us a voicemail. Let us know what you're geeking out about uh, and be featured on our show. And newsflash, we got a new telephone number this week, which I can't rattle off quite as easy as the old one. That number is 
four six zero five four nine three and be featured on our show again six one two four six zero five four nine three and leave us a message keep it under three minutes but get played on our show thanks again for the 14th time i'm going to tell you that sharing is caring and to keep on trucking be the hero not the villain in the truck truck you <laughs> T- truck on you crazy diamond truck off I never believed in things that I couldn't see. I said it.